Hello everyone, it's Manaya, and today I just want to take a little bit of time, it's like 11pm, and I want to read an excerpt from uh, a novel I'm working on for everyone here to enjoy. So, um, it's called An Oath of Stone, and this is chapter 1, A Beautiful Delusion. The sun set upon the world. Its grand arms of light danced with the shadowed claws of the moon. Hebine stood braced against his tower windows, looking upon the vast nothingness below. His dry, shriveled hands rubbed against the stone walls, every granule and crack a familiar friend to the weathered man. Just how many times had he watched this dance? How many times had the moon won her place only to have the sun steal it away come morning? As the last remaining light faded away, Hebine looked up toward the stars. The sun spies, he thought to himself. Just how clever of the sun to shine through the stars, only to hide them from the moon with his clouds. Hebine reached for the iron clasped bolt bolted to the window frame. A younger man would not find this so challenging. The window snapped shut, shading Hebine from the outside world. Within moments, the tower began to shake. Mechanisms clicked and echoed through the empty halls for what felt like minutes. The old man turned away, facing towards the room behind him. Cold air escaped his lips as he let out a long, drawn-out sigh. The room was circular and dull. Cold, grey stone floors lined with pelt. The rounded walls carved with ancient stones almost as old as the world itself. What were once bright tapestries now hung dark and rotting cloth, each lit by the amber hue of its own candle, wrestling within the darkness. In the centre of the room sat a small wooden table with a singular chair. Hebine slowly trudged around the circular walls, feeling the weight of his tired muscles pressing against his bones with each step. His brightly coloured robes trailed along behind him across the cold stone floor. As he passed each candle, he stopped at the tapestry and closed his eyes, mumbling the words beneath his breath that men were not supposed to hear. And with a sudden hiss, the light was extinguished. Hebine continued around the circular room. Each candle required a different word to command it. With just one candle left, Hebine slowly stretched his crooked back. The higher he raised his arms, the heavier the moon made them feel, and the more his ancient bones cracked and twisted into place. He climbed into his bed and stared out into the darkness. Tomorrow the sun will defeat the moon. And I will be safe again, he thought to himself. The old man's strained eyes stared into the darkness, beyond as he whispered the final word, each letter flowing across his lips like hot fire. The last candle dwindled. The old man let out a satisfied sigh. He felt three times lighter, closed his eyes, and took in a long, deep breath of the cold air. Today his work was done. Tomorrow the sun will rise again, taking its rightful place from the moon. For hundreds of years, Hebine had sealed himself away in his tower, nestled amongst a sea of trees shielded by a ring of snow-crested mountains. The tower itself was crafted from ancient stone and sealed with magic ruins. Crafted during the long-forgotten time of elves. Stone golems patrolled the empty corridors, creating an orchestra of rumbling stones that echoed throughout every room. Not even the tiniest of animal could scurry through the cracks without the old sorcerer knowing. As the moon made its place high in the starlit sky, Hebine found himself wrestling with his pelts. He raised his frail arm to his forehead, wiping away beads of sweat. With a sudden panic, he snapped open his eyes and peered into the darkness. Why is the air warm, he thought to himself. The air is always cold. 
It's never warm. This is not the way things should be. He, his wrinkled lips cracked apart and said the words not meant for men. Moments passed that felt like forever in the darkness. Hebine said the words beneath his breath again, darting his eyes left to right around the room. It was that then that he noticed a quiet that shouldn't be. He knew he set the golems. He always did. He said the words again and scanned the room. They are not yours to command. A voice rumbled through the room. Hebine's heart raced. He felt more alive than he had in centuries. Hebine's neck cracked as he peered his eyes toward the sound. Hebine the Great. Hebine the Powerful. Hebine the Builder. The Protector. The Immortal. The voice paused for a brief moment. Hebine the Oathbreaker. The words felt like knives pressing into his chest. Hebine's hands began to tremble as his brain set alight, searching through memories older than most mortal lives. His cracked lips parted as the warm air scratched against his throat. Who, who are you? How? His voice strained out. It's impossible. My shield, my golems, my traps. Hebine stared out into the darkness again, his eyes still fighting against the darkness. Frozen to his bed, his old limbs refused his commands to move. No one could survive the journey here. No one! Nobody but me. The voice growled low and deep. The echoes of the words bounced off the ancient stone walls. Hmm. Elvish. Predictable. Disappointing. The candles stirred and began to wake, their amber hue replaced with a tanzanite glow. The flame stretched alive in a calm and gentle sway, waltzing with the shadows around them. Standing by the wooden table was a tall, dark figure. Hebine shuffled himself upright. Reveal yourself to me, creature. You who should not be trespassing upon my tower. Your tower. The creature's voice echoed off the walls, rumbling against the old man's chest. I know the sacrifices these stones were carved from. Each word pressed heavy against his flesh. They call to me. Hebine's hands fell to his side, his shoulders giving in to the weight of his fingers. You think I didn't know this day would come, creature? He muttered. Do you know how many bloodlines have tried and failed to kill me? Hebine swung his old body to the side, pressing his bare feet against the cold stone floor. The sorcerer stood tall and proud against the darkness. He patted his hand on the table next to him, scanning his fingertips. There it was. Hebine grasped a twisted wooden stick, levering his body against it. Hebine felt the floor vibrate as the beast let out another low growl. The tanzanite flames began to flicker and grow, casting a rainbow of blues and purples across the room. The creature in the center stood proud and tall, taller than any human could be, his skin smooth and cracked like weathered grey stone. Leathery wings wrapped around his body like a winter's cloak clasped against his collar. Long black hair speckled with strands of grey draped over his broad shoulders, his legs stone scaled with specks of blue purple tanzanite crystals protruding through the cracks of his skin. The beast stepped closer, his large wings unfolded around his shoulders, a studded leather loincloth hung around the beast's waist, his body littered with patches of scales. Hebine blinked once, and then again. It was then that Hebine noticed all the scars. The creature took a step forward, his clawed feet scraping against the stone floors like a sword kissing a whetstone. I impossible, Hebine quivered. It, it cannot be. Hebine thrust his staff towards the ceiling. He whispered more words beneath his breath. Your magic will not work, the beast bellowed. You have no control here. This is my tower, my home. It answers to me, Hebine shouted back. How is this possible? The hope in his voice began to fade, revealing the frail old man beneath. I am your truth, Hebine. I know who you are. 
I've seen what you've done. For generations I have suffered by the makings of your shadows. The beast growled softly through his fanged teeth. This time more gently, more tired. Do you have any idea the damage you've done? It spoke. Hebein was stunned, tired and scarred. He had worked for many terrible rulers in his day. What had he done to this creature to earn a hatred that spanned generations? The beast ambled along the stone floor towards the first tapestry, each step leaving a heavy thud. He ran his scaled hand along the tattered, faded threads. Such a shame. The creature's claws tapped against a stone. Its nails sparkled in the candlelight. This will not do. He turned his head, looking towards the frail old man. Light glistened behind his obsidian eyes like ocean waves in the starlight. I have toiled the earth with men, broken iron shackles, and bled upon the ash and dust of my ancestors. Hebein pressed his hand against his chest. I lead the revolution of my kin, brought the destruction of Taranesh, and shared the skies with dragons long extinct. I have climbed the sleeping mountains and claimed the giant's gifts for my own. I have dined with the kings and queens from all across the lands. The creature's posture faltered. With his stone-scaled arm, he reached out and caressed the flame against the tip of his finger. The purple-blue flame rolled gently across his hand, nestling itself in the palm. His claws reflected against cracked leather fingertips. The room sat still for a moment. Hebein couldn't help but stare as the flame took the simple shape of a human female. He looked towards the intruder as a teardrop ran along the cracks in his stone-like cheeks, reflecting the light from the room like stars twinkling in the sky. The beast looked down towards the flame and closed his eyes. I have lost and I have loved, but so, so much I have lost. His voice cracked dryly. The flame woman melted into the shape of a hand and clasped itself between his claws before crackling and hissing away into a steam of mist slipping through his fist as blue flames dripped from between his fingers. Habein felt his heart beating against his bones. And I have lived the life many times over, and I am known by many names. Shadow Claw, Stone Fang, Silver Stone, the Knight's Death, the Moon's Assassin. But she, she called me Malin. He cleared his throat. The old man rubbed his hands against his robes, wiping off the beads of sweat that had pulled up his wrinkled hands. What did I do to have wounded you so? His upper lip quivered as the words escaped his tongue. The beast collected himself and strode across the room, inspecting each tapestry as he passed by. He whispered to himself, So disappointing. All this time, I imagined so, so much more. He said with a bated breath. Hebein pushed his tired legs against the cold stone floor and hobbled towards Malin. What do you want, beast? Money? Treasure? Magics? I can give you all of these things. I ask you questions that you refuse to answer. Why do you ignore me so? Malin's obsidian black eyes shifted and locked onto Hebein's. Please, you have me at my mercy. Leave this place. Let me be. You can have a life most men could only ever dream of, he pleaded. Malin let out a long sigh. Shallow cracks lined his pale grey face. His obsidian eyes pierced through Hebein. There was something strange about those eyes. They were deep and cold, never-ending. Do you think the feeble dreams of man could defeat the nightmares of my immortality? Malin snapped at him. The gargoyle clenched his stone fist in anger and let out a low growl. Mm, my apologies, he said. We're wasting too much time, and there is so much to be done. If you really want the answer to your questions, sit. Malin gestured towards the small wooden table in the center of the room. Make yourself comfortable, for my story spans lifetimes. 
Habein sauntered over to the table. Malin turned towards the first tapestry, eyeing its bare threads, and he pulled his wings close, draping them over his shoulders like a winter's cloak. As all good stories go, we must start at the beginning. A small cloud of smoke escaped his mouth, riding along the air currents and swirling around the tapestry. The bare threads began to glow and weave themselves, as if cycled back through time, settling into a younger version of itself. Hevain watched with a smirk on his face. He wondered to himself just how Malin was able to use manipulative magics like this while his own talents had been disabled. How did he learn such powerful words? The tapestry revealed a bright, colourful image of a wooden mill with a thatch roof placed along a healthy river, its large wooden wheels spinning with the currents. Wildflowers spread where the building's stone foundations kissed the soil. Malin turned towards Hebein and gestured at the tapestry. And so my story begins. So, there you have it. That was part of the first chapter of one of my upcoming novels. I hope you enjoyed it. It's still a work in progress and everything here could change. Um, but I really wanted it to share with everyone and I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, follow me on Minds, um, minds.com forward slash Manaya. Um, that's where I hang out the most and where you can interact with me the most. Um, and yeah, stay safe, peace, and I will see you all in the next video, I guess.